welcome to my class. Our topic for today is solving problems involving test of hypothesis on population mean. To begin with, let us state the objectives. Identify the steps in hypothesis testing. Solve problems involving test of hypothesis on population mean. Now, let's take a review. In testing hypothesis on the population mean, follow the steps below. First, state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Second, determine the test statistic that will be used to conduct the hypothesis test. Then, calculate its value. Third, find the critical value for the test and draw the critical region. And lastly, decide and draw a conclusion based on the comparison of the calculated value of the test statistic and the critical value of the test. Another thing to remember, in right tail test, if the computed value is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. But if the computed value is less than the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is not supported. In left tail test, if the computed value is less than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. But if the computed value is greater than the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is not supported. To deepen our understanding, let us use this example. According to a study conducted by the grade of students, 155 pesos is the average monthly expense for cell phone loads of high school students in the province. A statistics student claims that this amount has increased since January of this year. Do you think his claim is acceptable if a random sample of 50 students has an average monthly expense of 165 per cell phone loads? Using 5% level of significance, assume that the population standard deviation is 52 pesos. Let us first identify the given. Our sample mean is 165. Our population mean is 155. Our standard deviation is 52 pesos. Our sample, which is 50, and our level of significance, which is 5%, is 0 0.05. Using the step 1, state the null and alternative hypothesis, we have our null hypothesis, mu is equal to 155. Our alternative, mu is greater than 155. Let us now determine the test statistic and compute its value. Since we are going to use the, uh, the uh, one tail test, which is the right tail test, let us use the formula z is equal to x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation over the square root of n. By substituting the given, we have 165 minus 155 divided by 52 all over 100 over square root of 50. Thus, we have 165 minus 55 is 10 and 52 divided by square root of 50 is 7.35. Therefore, the value of z is equal to 1.361. Now, let us follow the step 3. Find the critical value and draw the critical region. Use the z-critical value table. Let us now draw the standard normal curve and locate the given critical value, which is 1.645 under the alpha, which is 0 0.05. Locating our computed value, which is 1.361, it shows that the z-value is less than the critical value. Therefore, to draw the conclusion, the z-computed value, which is 1.361, it lies within the non-rejection region, it means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, there is no enough evidence to support the claim that the average monthly expense for cell phone load is more than 155 pesos. This result is significant at 0 0.05 level. Let's take another example. Blood glucose levels for obese teenagers have a mean of 120. A researcher thinks that a diet high in raw cornstarch 
will have a positive or negative effect on blood glucose levels. A sample of 25 patients who have tried the raw cornstarch diet has a mean glucose level of 135 with a standard deviation of 38. Test the hypothesis at the given alpha 0.10 that the raw cornstarch had an effect. Let us identify the given. We have the sample mean which is 135, population mean which is 120, our standard deviation of the sample which is 38, our sample which is 25 patients, the given level of significance which is 0.10, degree of freedom of 24. Let us first determine the null and alternative hypothesis. Our given Null hypothesis is mu is equal to 120, and our alternative is mu is not equal to 120. To be able to identify the test statistics, we are going to use the PP test. Let us now compute its value using the formula T is equal to x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation all over square root of n. Substituting the given, we have 135 minus 120 all over 38 all over square root of 25. We have 135 minus 120, which is 15, and 38 divided by the square root of 25 is 7.6. The computed t value is 1.974. Let us use our step 3 to find the critical value and draw the critical region. Use the t critical value table. Remember, degree of freedom is 24. Applying that on our standard normal curve, we're going to locate that we have negative 1.711 and positive 1.711. Our given computed value is 1.974, which is located on the rejection region, and we can say that the T value or the computed value is greater than the critical value. We can conclude that we reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. We can conclude that there is enough evidence to support the claim that the raw cornstarch influence blood glucose level. Let's take another example. The average IQ of senior high school students is 99 with a standard deviation of 15. A researcher believes that the average IQ of senior high school students is lower. A random sample of 40 students was tested and got an average of 95. Is there enough evidence to suggest that the average IQ is lower? Test the hypothesis at 0.05 level of significance. Let us identify the given. We have the sample mean which is 95, our population mean which is 99, our standard deviation which is 15, our sample 40, and the level of significance which is 0.05. Following the step 1, state the null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is our mu is equal to 99. And our alternative is mu is less than 99. Let us determine the test statistic, then compute its value. Since we're using a non-directional, it means that we're going to use one tail test, which is left tail test. Using the formula Z is equals to x bar is minus mu divided by standard deviation all over square root of n. Substituting the given, we have 95 minus 99 divided by 15 all over the square root of 40. 95 minus 99 is negative 4 and 15 divided by square root of 40 is 2.37. We have the z value which is negative 1.688. Using our step 3, let us find the critical value and draw the critical region. Using our standard normal curve, let us locate our critical value which is negative 1.645 and our given computed value which is negative 1.688. Since our z value is less than our critical value, we can conclude that the z computed value which lies within the rejection region, we reject now the null hypothesis. Therefore, there is enough evidence to support the claim that the IQ level of senior high school student is lower than 99. This result is significant at 0 0.05 level of significance. That's all for today, class. Thank you for listening. And always remember, aim high, senior high!